back to Akshita's recipes. Thank you so much for being here. I know you'll enjoy these uh, vlogs when I put up as to what I cooked today or what I made during the week. So today's video also is similar. It's just that what I cooked up during the week, whatever recipes I made during the week, whatever I could uh, you know, feature over here and some little tips and tricks along the way. So I hope you enjoy this video. Do give it a thumbs up if you do and leave your comments in the comment section below. So let's get started with today's video. So let's get started with what I cooked and what I did uh, just randomly throughout the week. Now this is my oats breakfast that I prepare. I leave a recipe for that. And this is some lemongrass, you know, that I cut up and I keep ready. So I put it to my, add it to my tea when I'm boiling my tea. This is the milk ready for my tea or in the morning for breakfast. Then uh, once I had made these pores which was super delicious. I'll leave a link to all the recipes I mentioned in this video. I mentioned in this video as well as uh, other recipes. Now this is, you know, some clarified butter or ghee and the easy way to get it out of the bottle when there's very little left is you just boil some water down or if something is cooking, just hold the bottle of the ghee, you know, on top of it. And that way you'll see that all of the ghee in about two minutes starts to melt. And, uh, you know, that way you don't waste any of the ghee. And then, you know, it becomes into this lovely liquid, which you can just pour into your ghee container. And then what I like to do also do is that when there's little bit left, if I'm making chapatis or poris, I just, you know, uh, put the pori or the chapati into the ghee daba and just twirl it around. That way you're making maximum use and not wasting any of this beautiful ghee or clarified butter. And then I like to place it on a small thing with a little bit of on a small tray or a saucer with some tissue paper that way it doesn't get you know greasy. So just some tips along the way. Now that day I had to make some powdered sugar so I just added it to my mixer jar and just uh, ground it to a very fine powder. I think I was making some sweet and I required the powdered sugar for that recipe. Sometimes you need to sieve it also. Now, one trick I, I learned is when you're boiling anything, like here I was making some biryani rice or, or pulao rice, I guess. So I just keep a wooden spoon on top and that way the, oh yeah, I was making this mixed uh, vegetable pulao. So when you keep a wooden stick on top of anything that's boiling, it doesn't overflow. So that's one trick I wanted to share with you guys. So I made this lovely pulao with all mixed veggies. I'll leave a link to that below. Then this is, uh, some tomato sauce that I was preparing, some pizza sauce. Now this is my Goan uh, chicken cutlet, uh, you know, uh, uh, mixture already. And I made these cutlets later in the day. And I think I'd also made some wedge pulao. So we had that with some chicken curry on one of the days. Then one day we wanted to keep it nice and light. So I made this lovely dal kichri. Then one day it was pouring cats and dogs, so I wanted to make some lovely vada pao. So this is the mixture. Don't worry guys, all the recipes will be down in the description box below. So this is the mixture of the mashed potatoes and the coriander and, uh, you know, some mikthetsa, that is uh, ginger, garlic and green chili paste with a lot of lemon. And then I just made the mixture and... Uh, you know, form them into balls and kept them in my steel daba. And then in the evening when we were ready to have that with a nice hot cup of tea, we just uh, dip them in some lovely chickpea flour uh, batter and fried that. I mean, whenever it rains, you know, you always feel like eating kanda bhaji or batata bhaji or vada pao. So then in the evening, we fried these vadas. And uh, then I made a small chutney with some garlic. And, uh, you know, when you're frying these vadas, you get all these extra crispies at the side. So you take that and you put it in your mortar and pestle. You add a little bit of uh, garlic and a little bit of salt and, uh, you know, red chilies. And you grind it to a nice powder. And then you get this lovely chutney. So that was our meal. Now, I don't know whether this is with only with me or with everyone, but whenever I'm cooking, I need my gas stop to be spotlessly clean. So whether I'm making breakfast or whether I'm making lunch or I'm cooking something for the, for YouTube, I mean, some video, 
I need my gas stop to be spotlessly clean. So, you know, I always wipe it up with my microfiber cloth and then sometimes I spray it with the cleaning liquid and then clean it up and then give it a nice buffering with my microfiber cloth. But I just can't get myself to cook on a gas stop that is dirty and has, you know, some uh, maybe uh, flour from making chapatis or anything. So let me know in the comment section whether you all are also like me, where you all want to clean with a clean gas stop. Okay, this is my small kitchen window. So here I'm growing some aboli flowers. Then this is my pudina or mint, uh, uh, you know, uh, plant. And this is my lemon tree, which I always talk about where I throw all the lemon pips. Now that day I was organizing my vegetable tray in my fridge. So here I, this is how I uh, put everything. Now, you know, I always wrap my lemons in some newspaper or random paper. That way they remain fresh and juicy for a longer time. And then I have those bags. Now here also I put my coriander in some in a box which I put paper around. And these are some chilies. So I store most of my stuff in brown paper bags or in these netted bags. And, you know, I have shared a, recipe, uh, a video on how I store my, these are some few lovely carrots. Uh... And these are some more chilies. So I have two different types of chilies. One is the less spicy one. So I always put my coriander in this box with newspaper. That way, you know, it remains nice and fresh for a longer time. So here also I have my curry leaves. I wrap them up also in some newspaper and then put them in a, a container. That way they remain fresh for a longer time and they don't dry. So these are the tricks I've learned from my mom, my grandmom. You know, how to preserve stuff longer. Even though you're refrigerating it, sometimes food does go bad. So I leave a link of how I, uh, you know, uh, clean and store my vegetables. So here I just got a nice big batch of greens. That is some coriander. And I love to buy this coriander with these little white flowers on them. That, you know, they just have a lovely flavor. I don't like those Chinese coriander with those big leaves. I like these. This is called the, you know, the actual gouty coriander that you get, which is really, really delicious and really flavorsome. And so organic also. I get my veggies from a particular, uh, you know, guy who get, gets everything, which is all organic. So, yeah, like I was saying, I put it into the container and then I put newspaper down and newspaper on top and pack it up. That way it remains fresh for a longer time. So, uh, coming to desserts for the week, I had made a nice caramel pudding because I had a lot of milk at home, a little extra milk. So, I went and ahead and made some caramel pudding. I mean, you know, desserts are always welcome. In the night, you know, when hunger strikes, after a, uh, after a meal, if you're watching some nice movie or you're reading a book and you want to eat something sweet, we always have some dessert in the refrigerator. So, this was my caramel pudding. I have a recipe for the eggless one also. This is of course with egg. And I also have a bread pudding recipe. So I leave all those links below. So this is that. Then that day I bought some Amul dark chocolate compound. So I wanted to make brownies. And brownies is a big hit at my time. And I have a, such a simple recipe. A one pot recipe. And you know I just make it so often. Because we all love brownies at home. So I wanted to try out this new dark chocolate compound. And these are my measuring cups. Uh, you know, they're so handy for my, all my recipes and you can never go wrong when you're using measuring cups. So I just prepped up everything and this recipe is so amazing. You just put everything into one pot and, uh, you know, preheat your oven and pop it into your oven. Now I've got many uh, qu questions about Ak Akshita. What is your oven type? So mine is a Bajaj Majestic 1200. That is the that's what's written on it. I think TMC or something. I'll leave the, uh, the link in the description box below. And anyway, this is my brownie all ready. And I have these lovely silicone mitts, you know, that really help. Uh, I mean, it really makes it easy to take off stuff from the oven. And now my brownie is all ready. You can see how delicious it looks. And whenever I make brownie, you know, my neighbors also keep asking me, did you make brownie today, Akshata? Because it, the aroma is just fills up the whole space and, you know, uh, you come to know that someone's baking brownies. <laughs> the aroma is just fantastic. So I loved this Amul uh, dark chocolate compound. Normally I use more day, but I had gone to the Amul store and they have this in stock. It has have a different taste. So this is it already. Nice and hot. And we love to have hot brownie with, you know, some lovely vanilla ice cream on top. So I happened to make a batch of vanilla ice cream, which is a three ingredient uh, vanilla ice cream. So I put that on my brownie and put some lovely Hershey's chocolate sauce and some sprinkles and we had dessert already. 
Now, uh, somewhere down the week, I had made some potato bhaji. So, in the evening, there was some potato bhaji left over after we finished our meal. So, I just applied that to some bread and then I had some my green chutney. I applied that to the other side and then I just, uh, you know, put one on top of the other. Then I had, I had this batter from my batata vadas which was remaining. So, I just uh, put them, made sandwiches like this, dipped them in that and you get bread pakoras already. And again, it was a nice, heavy, rainy day. So, you know, anything deep fried on a rainy day is welcome. Not too much of it. We don't have a lot of deep fried stuff. But once in a way, you know, just to enjoy the rainy weather, the rainy season, we do have some deep fried stuff. So I just fried these bread pakoras and they were amazing. So if you have any leftover potato bhaji and you have some green chutney at hand and some bread slices, just make a batter out of some chickpea flour and you're all set. I hope you enjoyed today's vlog and I uh, I hope you leave your comments down below so I get to hear from all of you and do leave this video a big thumbs up don't forget to hit the red subscribe button and the notification bell that way you won't uh, miss out any of the videos I'm putting up on my channel uh, and uh, thank you so much for being here today I'll catch you soon in my next video bye